Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about radio telescopes. And they actually had a very meager beginning. Towards the beginning of the last century, around the 1930s, we had someone named Carl Jansky who worked for the Bell Telephone Laboratories as an engineer. And he built a radio telescope, a pretty primitive telescope, and he started using that. And they started noticing that there was some interference, some radio interference, and they started measuring where this interference appeared to be coming from. And they noticed that the interference was most strong when the constellation of Sagittarius was in the sky. And of course, that's looking towards the direction of the center of the Milky Way galaxy, so they began to connect the idea that the, this interference, wherever it may have been, was coming primarily from the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Then, somewhat later, between 1938 and 1944, we had someone named Grotto Raber, or Raber, however you want to pronounce that name, build a 10-meter dish, almost 33 feet across, in his own backyard. He used that dish over the period of about six years to map the entire sky, and he did it in two wavelengths, one at 1.9 meters, the other one at 0.63 meters, so those are relatively short radio waves. And he did that for the entire sky over a period of six years, and he realized that radio waves were not just coming from the center of the Milky Way, but coming from everywhere within the Milky Way. They may have been most strong towards the center, but he saw signatures from all over the place throughout our entire Milky Way galaxy. We seem to be getting these radio radiation or radio waves. Then, in the late 1940s and into 1950s, when we started doing a lot of experiments with rockets and satellites, began satellites in the late 1950s, we started making those measurements when we got up to space or jumps in suborbital orbit, and we noticed that when we're up there, we noticed some very strong uh, interference of radio radiation coming all from all over the place from space, and perhaps coming from beyond our Milky Way galaxy as well. So the starts was very primitive. We haven't had a radio telescope um, technology for that long, but since the 1940s, 1950s, we began to get very serious about that, and we started building large telescope dishes, radio telescopes, to, in order to be able to see what we're actually looking at, trying to uh, confirm what we would do is we would take a look with the radio telescope to various places where we get a strong signal, then we take a light telescope looking in the same direction to try and figure out what might be causing these radio signals that we're getting from all, all over Milky Way galaxy. Remember, with radio telescopes and these long wavelengths, the resolution wasn't very good. It was probably over a number of degrees, so, so it was very difficult to pinpoint exactly where these things were coming from. So it was kind of like a general idea that somewhere in that direction we're getting radio signals, but we're not quite sure what's causing those radio signals. Now that we have interferometry with a whole array of radio telescopes, we're doing a lot better at getting exact positioning on where those signals are coming from. And of course, we understand a lot better today what those radio signals are and what's causing them. Where before, it was still a mystery at that point. We just knew they were everywhere. We just had to figure out what they were. And that's the beginning of radio telescopes and the exploration of space using uh, radio radiation.